Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today we're going to take the same thing we did in our last lesson, which is looking at volumes of a solid by revolving it around an axis. But we're not going to do it on the x or y axis. This time we're just going to shift the thing vertically or horizontally, meaning we're going to shift it up or down, or we're going to shift it left or right, and then revolve it, okay? So it's basically the same thing. We're just shifting it over. But let's remember real quick, what is the volume of a solid of revolution? The volume is the integral from A to B, so the region that we're bounding, and then we do pi r squared, where the r is the radius of our our volume that we're revolving. And the radius, how do we get that? That's just the f of x. So hopefully that was clear in your last lesson and you did well on practicing through these problems because this is the same type of stuff. So we, to start us off, let's draw a quick little picture of this first problem. We have these two lines that are a, create a bounded region. So uh, this is a parabola that opens down with a y-intercept of three. So just it, this is just a quick little sketch. It's nothing like fancy or exact. And then y equals two, so we have a horizontal line here going like this. All right, so you can see the region. This is my region and I'm revolving it around the line y equals two. So now instead of the x-axis, I'm gonna revolve it around that line in a circle. Moving this, let's shade that in just a little bit so you can see it. This is what I'm gonna revolve. So what is that gonna look like? We would do the opposite view down here, or the, the uh, I should say the mirror image down here, and we'd be revolving it in a circle, revolving in a circle, revolving in a circle, revolving in a circle. Okay, so kind of like a football shape. That's what that looks like. What, how do we set up our integral? We first need to know from A to B. So what's our A and B? This one is simple enough where you could probably just eyeball it and figure it out, but let's make sure we know algebraically how to do that. You just want to take where the two lines equal each other. So where does 3x minus 3 minus x squared equal 2? And then you solve that real quick here. I'm going to fast forward to my through my algebra. Okay, so we have plus or minus 1. So a negative 1 to a positive 1. So now we can set up our integral. We're going to say from negative 1, b is positive 1. And then we have pi r squared. So I'm gonna set up my r squared here, and I know it is respect to x because it is revolving vertically. So it's going up and down on my, my like just like if it was along the x-axis, right? When we did the x-axis, it was with respect to x. So it's the same idea. It's revolving from top to bottom as we go around on that circle. Um, so now we need the radius. What is the radius? So as you look at this thing, the radius is the middle to the graph here. That's my r. So how do I calculate r? Well, I know that from, I'm gonna continue this line, all the way from the x-axis, this thing, that whole graph would have been three minus x squared, right? That's the top of my parabola. So let's say we're gonna take three minus x squared, and then I take away this part that I didn't use. And what's that distance? That distance right here, that's this distance. Right? That distance is just this line 2. So I subtract 2 to get it to take away my distance that was not used for revolving. All right, now we can clean this up just a little bit. We get negative 1, 1. The pi could come to the front if we want. The pi could come outside there since it's a constant. And then we have what combines here. 3 minus 2, that's a 1 minus x squared and then quantity squared with respect to x. So that is my answer for the setup of this. Now I wanna show you something real quick and that is how you can shift instead of calculating this distance. We could just take this whole graph and shift it down. So you don't need to write this out right now. I just want you to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm going to take this line y equals two and I'm gonna take both sides and just shift the whole thing down. So subtract two, subtract two. If I do that, then this line y equals two becomes the x-axis and I shift everything. It's almost like I could just grab it lift it off my paper and push it down here until it fits the x-axis. So if I shift that down, then what would my new equation be? I'm gonna draw this over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's my x-axis. I would just be shifting the whole thing down like this. And so, whoops, that was awful. So my new, this equation would now be y equals this one minus two. So it's just one minus x squared. And then it's now along the x-axis, revolving around the x-axis. So you can see that my other possibility of an equation would be from negative one to one, because that's still negative one to one. All we did was shift it down. We didn't shift it left or right. And then we have the radius, which is just this graph, one minus x squared dx. So you can see it's actually exactly the same answer. It gives us the same thing if you want to shift instead of calculating out that distance like we did here. 
So it's just a preference of what you prefer to do. I'm gonna show you one example where that can be a little confusing, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now. But most calculus books would do it what I, the way I did it in blue here, which was start off by taking the whole region and subtract what you didn't use. So the whole line minus what we didn't use for the minus two. Okay, let's do another one. So to do this correctly, I do wanna sketch a quick graph so I can see everything that's happening. This is a parabola of a opening, oh, it's y squared. So this parabola opens to the left, right? So I'm over here, left this direction. And then this parabola has, an, oh, x equals one. So right here, I'm gonna have a line x equals one. And so this is the region I'm going to be revolving. And I'm revolving it, let's do a mirror image this direction. I'm, re I'm revolving it this way. So it's another type of similar shape that we just did on our first problem. Just this way, it's going around left and right. So I'm revolving it around like that in a circle. So let's verify where my intersections are. I take two minus y squared and set it equal to the x value of one, because I'm trying to see where do these two lines cross there and there. Fast forward my algebra. So y values of negative one, y value of positive one. Okay, so this is actually similar to my last problem that I just did. So I'm gonna go from negative one to positive one, and then I could do pi r squared with respect to y this time, because it's like I'm revolving around the y-axis since it's this direction. I'm not revolving around the y-axis, I'm revolving around the line of x equals one, but it's similar to revolving around the y-axis where you're swinging this thing around horizontally, around a vertical line. Okay, so what is my distance? So you've gotta remember, my y-axis is right there, right? That's, that one is my y-axis. So if I wanna know this radius, I would take the whole thing from the y-axis which is, what's the whole thing? The whole thing is two minus y squared. So I'm gonna say two minus y squared. And then I'm going to subtract what I didn't use. So this little gap in between here is what I didn't use and that gap was a distance of one. So I now can take the pi out. I get negative one to one. And I'm going from two minus one is one minus y squared, quantity squared with respect to y. Now I could do the same thing and that is just shift this whole thing, right? If it's around the line x equals one, I could shift everything this direction one, which would mean subtract one from these graphs, pushing it left. So since this is in terms of y, I would just take this graph and subtract one, take this graph and subtract one. So that would give me around the line x equals zero and this would be one minus y squared instead. And it would end up giving me exactly the same thing. So it's just a preference on whether you wanna shift it or whether you wanna just calculate what that distance is yourself. Let me show you one more problem that will now throw off our shifting when we shift left, right, up, or down. That will be, make this a little bit weird. And that's when you're doing it around a line that is negative. Uh, so things look a little differently when you do shifting with that respect. But let me show you first, let's do the graph. So let's see, how good are you with your uh, exponential functions here, right? Two to the X minus three. What does that graph look like? Let's go one, two, three, and this is now my horizontal asymptote for the graph y equals two x minus three. So where does it, let's find some points that, that are easy for it. If I plug into x a zero, all right, what does that give me? Two to the zero is one, one minus three is negative two. So I know it goes through a y-intercept of negative two. And then this is an exponential graph. Oh, that was bad, my hand slipped, squiggle. Okay, so there we have our exponential graph and it's just approaching this asymptote over here on the left. Now that we have that, now this dashed line, that's not part of this graph. It was just there because it helped me with my horizontal asymptote. Uh, now, what am I doing? Y equals negative two. So right on this line, Y equals negative two, I have a horizontal line and what else? X equals three. So somewhere over here, I've got a line of X equals three. So this is my region I'm gonna revolve. So let's do, we're revolving around the, the the line y equals negative two, this line. So I'm revolving this direction, right? And so I'm gonna do a mirror image down here and then I could create my, switch to blue, I could create my little oval shape here to show that it's going around in a circle. Something like that. Okay, let's start figuring out the radius and the integral and all that stuff. So I say from, oh, we need to know the intercepts. That point right there is zero, negative two. Um, that point right there is uh, three, right? X equals three, three comma negative two. And then that point right there, just in case I need it, it's where X equals three crosses this line. 
So if x equals 3, you do go 2 to the third is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So that's going to be a 3 comma 5. So I just took that 3 and plugged it in. So I don't, I, actually, I don't need this one. I don't need that 0.35 only because I'm doing the x values for this. So it's going from 0, 0 to 3 is my boundaries for this region that I'm going to be revolving, right? That whole thing right there. Uh, OK, so when we go pi r squared with respect to x, since I'm doing it up and down like this, around a horizontal line. So what's the distance? So what I need this time is I need to know the distance from the center to here. So that distance, what is that? Well, it's if I go from the x-axis to that line, that's a distance of 2, right? That distance is 2. So I'm going to write that down up here. So I have distance of 2. Wait, I shouldn't say 2. I should say negative 2. I know it's, it's just distance, so why would we say negative 2? But let, let's bear with me here. So we're going to say negative 2 because that's that line. So we just write the equation of the line, which is negative 2. And then we're going to subtract what I didn't use. So let me switch a cool color here, green. That's the distance we didn't use, right? Move my cursor so you can see it. That distance is the other curve, this exponential curve. So I'm going to subtract that curve that we did not use, 2 raised to the x minus 3. OK, so what does that give us? We go from 0 to 3. Um, I can pull the pi to the front. The pi will go in the front. And then I have negative 2 minus a negative 3 will combine. So that just gives me 1. So I have 1 minus 2 to the x, quantity squared with respect to x. So that's my answer. But now let's try if we just do a vertical shift, right? Let's take this whole thing and just shift it where we're doing it around the line y equals negative 2. What if we just shift this whole thing up 2? So both, let's just take everything and shift it up 2. And then, then the equations change a little bit. So now my equation would be y equals 2 to the x minus 1 because I added 2 to it. And this line is no longer y equals negative 2. It'd be y equals 0. And then it's just going along the x-axis. Instead of the line y equals negative 2, we're revolving it around the line uh, y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So what does that look like? I'll do it in red to show the difference. This is going to be pi integral still 0 to 3. And then uh, now I have, what's the radius? It's just this equation right here. Right? Because there's nothing to, there's no shifting or anything. There's no other line. It's just that would be like our, our x-axis. We've shifted the whole thing up. So it's just 2 to the x minus 1 quantity squared with respect to x. Now, this is where it's weird. What's going on here? These things are not exactly the same. They don't look the same. Here you have 1 minus 2 to the x. Here you have 2 to the x minus 1. But the nice thing is you're doing a quantity squared. They are equivalent. And to prove that to you, if I took 3 minus 10 and squared it, that's the same thing as taking 10 minus 3 and squaring it, right? This is negative 7 squared, which is positive 49. And this is 7 squared, which is positive 49. So you, regardless of which one goes first in subtraction, it's, be, it's the key is because we're squaring our answer. That's why it does not matter which one goes first once you have all this simplified. So if you shift it, just be aware, when you if you vertically or horizontally shift, your answer might have these in reverse order, but that's okay because you're quantity squaring it and it will be the exact same answer. So just be aware that when you're looking at solutions or you're looking at other old AP uh, problems and you're trying to say, oh, I have a different answer. Not if you actually plug it in the calculator or you work it out, it will be exactly the same answer. So we've covered everything we need for this lesson. It's the same thing we just did. We're just shifting up, down, left, right. Rock that master check and I'll see you back in our next lesson.